Okay, uh, it has come to my attention that a lot of you are interested in Crown Vic suspension swaps. Um, my preference is to take the 2003 to 2011 Crown Vic uh, or Mercury Marquis front clips and bolt them into the original F100 frame. I do not care for the entire frame swap for many reasons. Uh, including you have to make new body mounts, new bumper mounts, new bed mounts, um, and then you lose part of your bed because of the goofy hump over the rear suspension and gas tank area. Uh, so the 2003 to 2011 Crown Vicks, uh, Mercury Grand Marquis, and Lincoln Town Cars have this removable aluminum front suspension. It is held into the frame with these four long bolts, two on each side, the frame goes in here. You do have an alignment pin. These are the original 4.6 engine cradle mounts is where they bolt to. Uh, and then the rear control arm takes about three bolts here in this plate to the Crown Vic frame. Now, there are several options when doing these front ends. Um, my preference is to take these brackets uh, and turn them flat where they could go up against the Ford truck frame. Um, I've left them crooked, I've done them flat, I've done away with them and used brackets from Outcast Auto Works. Um, you gotta check them out. But there are a few differences in the frames, uh, the K frames, um, and none of it makes them install any different but there are some differences in these top plates some of them are cast steel some of them are cast aluminum some of them are like hollowed out here um so this depends on the year and the model that it comes out of uh the next thing is the lower control arms as you see here these are cast aluminum now some of them are um steel stamped steel and they're black um, and that depends on the original intended use of said vehicle now this is what we call a civilian front end because it does have the aluminum lower control arms most of your uh, what we would call municipality vehicles or fleet vehicles which would be taxi cabs limousines um, forestry service vehicles police cars um, or you know sometimes fire chiefs used to get crown vics detectives anything to do with less basically law enforcement or heavy use uh, they received, most of the time, they received the steel lower control arms. Uh, and if you go to a parts store, from what I've found, and you need a replacement, the only ones they offer are the cast aluminum, which are fine. There's, there's nothing wrong with those. Most of them got these. Like if your grandma went out and bought a Crown Vic brand new just to drive to church, her Crown Vic would have the aluminum lower control arms. Uh, another difference is some of the sway bars, like this one, has what I would consider non-removable mounts and bushings. Um, some of the other ones, depending on what year they are, I believe the newer ones, um, this bushing is removable and the bracket is removable. Uh, and the steering rack. Um, some of these steering racks are uh, different. As you see here, they have this weird looking round thing with an electrical connection on it and there's two little pins in there and what that's called is an EVO component electric valve orifice <clears throat> and what that does is uh, on the 2003 to about a 2006 or 7 they use these on the front ends and what this does is uh, when let's say you're in a, a police car and you're in a high-speed chase and you're chasing after someone uh, the faster you go uh, the more restrictive your power steering system becomes uh, and the reason for that is obviously if you have loose steering and you're going 80 to 100 miles an hour you don't want loose steering because you could you know veer too quickly and flip and all that but a lot of times if you use um, a GM application uh, with a GM uh, pump, uh, then this is doesn't do anything. It's it's good. Your steering is good enough without it. Uh, some Ford applications, you do have to wire this up. Uh, you can get a kit for that offline to make it work like it's intended, or you can do what we usually do and upgrade the steering rack to the 2008 to 2011 style steering rack. Just go to get to like Napa and get a remanufactured one. 
Uh, that's usually what we do because they don't even have that. It's manufactured without it. It never had it to start with. Um, so that's some of the differences. Now, a Mercury Marauder, uh, even though those are hard to find, we've got a hold of three or four of those over the years. Um, from what I can remember, the Mercury Marauder, which is basically a hot rod Grand Marquis, does have the same suspension. However, um, the sway bar on the one we got was bigger, and that could be aftermarket or it could have been factory um but they set lower i'm told that they set lower uh, about an inch or inch and a half i believe lower to the ground than a regular front end so that is basically a rundown of crown vic front ends now we've put these in a variety of things um i've put some in dodge d100s we've done uh forward f100s from 54 was the oldest one we've done so far so that would be 53 up because the 53 and 54 is the same frame um we've done them in 53 to 79 f100s um i have seen several people do them in the bull nose and brick nose f100s um i don't know how to do one of those we've never done one but we've done them in dodges fords um internationals uh, we did a couple of international pickup trucks. Um, I actually have an international metro van that this front end is probably going to go into. Um, like a mid-50s international metro van. If you don't know what that is, look them up. They're pretty cool. Uh, I've got to build one of those for a customer. Now, this rear end uh, is actually out of a 2007 Mustang. The same Mustang that all the guts in that F100 came out of. That's a different video. But for explanation purposes... This is close enough to see what a Crown Vic rear end looks like. As you see, it's very wide. It's broken, but it's very wide. Um, it has coil springs. It's very wide and has this big knot on the top. Now, if you cut that knot off, if you go down too far, it is open. It's, it's hollow up in there, so you'd have to weld something to cap that off if that's going to interfere with anything. Um, most of the time, we try to use a 99-04 to 04 Mustang rear end or... Um, some people are using the 98 to 02 Crown Vic rear ends, which are a little bit narrower than the 03 up. But, uh, or a Ford Explorer rear end, mid 90s, you know, Explorer. Um, they work pretty good. Now, there's different spring rates um, in these as uh, civilian and cop car. You can get different ones. There's all kinds of aftermarket support for these now. Um, if I was building a truck for myself to keep for a long time, Mm, I might be so inclined as to go a different route, but we do build a lot of these. Um, this truck here, 74 F100, uh, it does have the original 9 inch in the rear. It has new axles. It's redrilled to 5 on 4 and a half lug pattern, has a new center section. But this truck here um, has the Crown Vic front end, but I want to show you this first. It's got the 2007 Shelby GT500 Mustang um steering wheel steering column gauges radio uh has the entire wiring out of that vehicle also it does have the crown vic front end and it has the 5.4 supercharged v8 and six speed manual out of the 2007 gt500 uh so that's what this is but i'll show you up under this one sometime when i get it back on the lift i'll i'll pick it up and show you up under it how it, some of it works but like I said, those front ends are quite universal. You can do them in lots of different things. Um, but I just want to give a little rundown. And there are different brakes and stuff you can put on these. Someone sells a kit to put, I believe, GT500 brakes on one of these. Um, the Marauder does have bigger brakes. So if you find bigger brakes off of a Mercury Marauder, those are pretty cool. <coughs> But yeah, you can buy all kinds of different coilovers. You can buy airbags for these now. Uh, you can buy different factory replacement struts that do different spring rates and different things. You can buy little brackets now that go here. They bolt on here. You drill two holes and bolt them here, and then they bolt in that. And that drops this down about an inch or so. So you can get an inch of drop with factory suspension and not do anything if you need to go lower. Some people you do. Um, but yeah. So that's just a rundown on the Crown Vic front ends. Um, I've got several of these laying around. I try to buy them when I get a hand on them. Pretty cheap. Um, around here, 
some of these there is one junkyard around here that gets about 60 bucks for one but you have to take it out yourself um but generally around here they go from 250 to 500 dollars depending on what they come out of how nice they are who's got them uh depends on if they're taken out already but you do have to cut the entire twin i-beam garbage suspension out of that frame before you can bolt this in you can't just roll this up under an f100 and bolt it in it's not a five minute bolt in process uh so you're gonna spend a lot of time cutting the twin i-beam front end out of the original ford truck unless you have a straight axle um from 53 to 64 then you'll just remove the steering um, remove the leaf spring shackles and bolts cut off the hangers and bolt that in it's a lot easier uh, but another thing, like I said, you got to do a lot of cutting and grinding to get all that junk out. But these plates bolt like this, and that goes the frame rail goes in here like this. And most of the time, if you don't use an aftermarket, what they would call a swap kit from some of these companies that are available, uh, you do have to make a spacer that goes between this and the top of your original frame because the Crown Vic frame is obviously thicker than the Ford truck frame uh so that's just a quick little rundown but keep in mind like i said it is a lot of work to get all that old crap out of there uh, and then you need to box your frame and or put the tubes out of the crown vic frames if you take one of these apart you'll see what i'm saying but if you don't uh like this one's just out i recommend putting a piece of thick wall tubing in the frame up and down on these bolts so the bolts can go through the tubing so it doesn't squish the frame when you honk down on those big old bolts uh but i'm trying to think if i forgot anything i'm sure i have but uh like i said there's plenty of options so if you have any comments drop down below follow me on tiktok uh for m uh, most of the time i'm on there more than i'm on here uh tiktok and instagram but i hope this has been helpful send this to your buddies who's considering this swap it is a fairly simple swap it's straightforward once you've done a few of them you can do them in your sleep um but like I said, there's a lot of aftermarket support. There's a lot of work to get all that old crap out of there. Uh, and you don't have to weld anything. You don't have to weld anything. You can. I recommend it. I recommend welding the bottom plates on. I recommend welding a, uh, like I said, welding the tubes in the frame, a boxing plate on the outside of the frame. I recommend doing that. Um, and then I recommend welding the plates or whatever you do for these down here, whatever you do for that, I recommend welding those on. But this is intended for the DIY guy. If you've got a sawzall and a grinder and some a chisel or whatever, and you got some buddies and some beer, you go ahead and you try to knock this out in a weekend. Most of the time, if you've got everything you need before you start, you can at least get it up under there and get it rolling and the steering hooked up. Um, that's another thing. I'm glad I mentioned the steering. These steering joints... What we do is this little nub, we usually just nib that off and clean this up, but this is what they call a Ford triangle steering joint. So when we do one, you can use a couple of the different things out there. There's several kits available. Uh, we just make our own. This is called a Ford triangle joint. So you would need a steering joint that is compatible with the Ford triangle down here and then up here on this end, whatever it is you decide to to do whether it be three quarter double d shaft or some, some something else some spline something that you do you i don't recommend using the factory crown vic shaft it's just goofy looking it's wobbly and all collapsible and everything but you do you um it's not hard but let me know if you got any questions or comments i'll try to address everything um thanks for watching like i said follow me on tiktok and instagram i am at creative customs hot rods i spell that with two k's by the way on instagram i am at patina and politics on tiktok so thanks for watching um subscribe to my channel if you have any questions or concerns about crown vic front ends let me know in the comments um if you want one of these put in i am in the upstate of south carolina i do these all the time i am fairly booked because i'm apparently the only one around here that does these nobody else wants to do them uh so let me know if i can help you in any way thanks for watching